In Asaprite, I want to explain the range of onion skinning. So to first start off, if you look where my mouse is, it's in the lower left uh, corner area. Um, there's a box here. Uh, it's on the timeline right over here. I'm trying to move my mouse. I'm sorry, it's a bit small. Um, but right now it's enabled. And basically you click that button right there. And you know, in the bottom left, it'll say whether it's enabled or disabled. I'm going, I'm going to enable it, of course, and we're on the first frame. And the thing about the uh, frames is that on the first layer, well, the reason why no onion skin is shown here is because uh, it's the first frame in the whole animation. So if we go to the uh, second layer, we are on the uh, second layer. That's where we are in the animation timeline. But we're seeing a... <sighs> A grayer version and that you know the number one is the first layer and that is the onion skin that's the first one so I drew a, <laughs> I drew a very sloppy number two in orange pixels on this layer but the point of the onion skin is to help you see what you did previously to help structure where you're at, where you want to be taking your animation your next animation frame or the one we're currently on um, so at this point, if we go to number the third frame, well, I'm showing the first frame's onion skin and the second frame's onion skin, but we're on the third frame. If we draw on this, it will not affect frames one or two. It will just affect uh, frame three. But because of the range of the slider here, um, because of the range of the onion skin, if you look if you look in the lower left-hand corner where I was before where my computer mouse is, I'm trying to hover in the area to guide your eyes. There are these uh, two little constraints. They kind of look like a little cluster of blue pixels of arrows pointing on a current uh, current frame. If you look at the left here, like you can see uh, where my mouse is, it turned into um, this symbol. It's kind of like a mover type thing. It's uh, left and right arrows. So it, it's from the first frame to the third frame. So because we're within that range, it's showing um, it's showing frames one and two. But if I move, if I start at the frame here, frame one, and I move it to uh, frame two here, I just moved it away from frame one. So now the constraint of the onion skin is only showing layers. I'm um, sorry, <laughs> it's only showing the animation frames uh, two and three within that range or array, um, it's now only showing that number two. But if I go to the fourth frame here, um, you know, the other important thing is when I click these uh, dots below here, it remembers the constraint of it just being uh, two. Like, like when it's within this range of just showing two, it'll just show the last frame. If you're on the first frame, it will not show it because, um, well, there's no frame before one, but the range is the last frame. But now if I want to go to three, if I extend the range back to one, so it's showing the last two frames, it's showing frames one, it's showing frames two, but we're on the third frame. But when I go to the fourth frame, it's only, it's, uh, there's nothing drawn on the fourth frame. I'll quickly draw on the fourth frame, <laughs> a sloppy number four. Um, the range is remembered because we, the way I extended it here, it'll show the last two frames. So because it's showing the last two frames, it's showing frames two and three. And uh, in general, I think what it tries to do is it tries to lower the uh, brightness or I don't know, saturation of the last two frames to help guide you because you also don't want those last frames to be in the way. Another tip. Uh, for this is when you are uh, working with onion skins, you want to, you probably want to use a background layer that is either all white or all black or like all like the background layer in your preferences. Like, let me show you real quick in your preferences. Um, it's showing two here because originally I had the checker frame um, and the checker frame uses two colors to kind of make a grid of pixels. Um, but you could select a one solid background color instead of that. But yeah, if you work with a grid, it kind of makes it a bit confusing to see. So when you're working with animations, I do recommend you use a solid 
um, background and you know that would also be the uh, transparency color so because we're on frame right now we're on frame four and i would only be drawing on frame four but if i go to three we don't see anything of uh, frame four but yeah see it, it it keeps it within that range and even if i add a well when i add a new frame uh just note that when you do do that unless you specifically select the option of new empty frame the new frame will duplicate the pro uh, previous frame and i could just go on frame five and press the uh, delete key to do that um or to like clear that frame but yeah fr this is frame four which i didn't mean to draw over but i did but yeah now we're on frame five and it's keeping within that layer so depending on how you are uh, moving your animations or where you want to be headed to you can move the uh, ranged slider either on the left side if you look where my computer mouse is again um you have to look for those double arrows to see them. You can either do it from the left or do it from the right. It probably helps it, maybe if you want to go back a frame, but, you know, I guess you'll have to do testing to figure out uh, the range that you want to see. I guess it all depends how helpful the, how, like, the helpful onion skins, where they are heading you in your uh, animation process. So, yeah, you could extend it to any length, or you could just do the last one. Oops. Oops. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to, uh, see it. I've, uh, I've messed with it. It's kind of like you have to hold it and you have to drag it. You hold it, like, once you see those double, uh, arrows, you hold it and then you drag it until you see the blue but the two the upper left hand and the lower left hand uh corners on the frame that you want to be on like we're on frame three right now but if i extend it back to frame two it'll show uh the onion skin of frame two while we're on frame three <laughs> and uh yeah but yeah it does it does keep it as you go and add more layers it will uh it will just keep to the last one so yeah the range is uh it it'll stay with what you last set it to but yeah it's uh you may have to do some experimenting to uh understand it as you go but yeah i, I like it it's uh it took a little getting used to i feel like um some of the settings maybe it's a bit difficult to see for some people i don't know if there's a way to zoom in more there probably is a way to make the user interface a little bit larger um, but since I went to the trouble of making all these numbers, let's see what it looks like if I play it. <laughs> a bit of a mess because I, I think I made, um, yeah, I made frame four a bit of a mess, but oh well. I think it should be better now. <laughs> sort of not really. I probably, so the other important thing to note about onion skinning is, um, unless you, like when you're playing the animation like this, uh, up here in the preview window, window, it'll look normal. But because I have uh, the last onion skin selected, that's why when you play the animation on the timeline here, it's showing everything. Like if I wanted to just show um, the animation one frame at a time, oops, I would have to uh, move the onion skin which I just did. It's hard to see because it's th that that frame selected. Okay, there I selected the uh, frame itself instead of the uh, the num the number on top. But uh, if you see here, you'll see that the onion skin arrows are just in that frame, basically, because the upper left hand, the lower left hand, the upper right, and the lower right uh, onion frames are just <laughs> the onion skin frames are are just on the same layer. Uh, it's not going to show any onion skin at all. So when I play that animation, it will not um, show the last frame. I'm not exactly sure if there is a benefit to playing the animations here and also um, showing the frame. Oops. Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to see. Oh, okay, I guess maybe the last tip I'll say is um, it appears that it's really difficult. Like when you, when you selected the whole thing, like the, the frame itself and the number, um, that's not showing the 
onion skin range. So you would just click the frame itself and then you could drag the onion skin range. So yeah, I hope these tips help you understand the onion skinning uh, functionality better. I really do like it and I really do uh, like this program uh, a lot. I'm not sponsored anyway, so please don't think of it like that. Um, I'm not, I just like uh, doing pixel art and learning it and uh, I find it, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why I like it, but I thought whenever I get really stumped on something, I tend to uh, make a video like this because I sometimes feel like the online documentation is good, but I feel like I feel like I can help explain it to other people better or even myself better. So I do hope this kind of helps you understand how to uh, work with it. I probably, I don't know everything. So if I do know more in the future, um, if you look on my channel, there's a playlist called Pixels. So if I ever do learn more tips about As Asaprite, if I'm saying that right, um, that, that will be in that playlist. Or if you do have a question, you could ask in the comments and I'll try to uh, touch upon it. I will say though, I really do love this program, but there are some features that just totally baffle me. I mean, like I understand there's like definitely a reason um, for why it is the way it is. And it's probably something that I just don't understand. And there's just a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to this program. But for the most part, like I love it. I mean, that's all I could say. But yeah, thanks for listening. I hope this video helps you out. Bye.